Fire Studios, and well, I'm all by myself today. All by myself. You know how the song goes. Um, yeah, all of our folks, uh, our regulars with Aaron and Ashley, and all of our fill-ins. Well, everyone's on vacation. As a matter of fact, Craig, or our producer, is on vacation, but oh, not me. I'm here just toiling away, and I'm glad you joined us here on Wing Nation. We have a great, great program for you. Sunshine and the Shark is what we're calling it, and it is going to be a great time, that is for sure. So, yeah, wonderful, wonderful time, and uh, thanks for twisting us in here on Wing Nation. If you follow along for the last few weeks, or if you happen to follow along our social media channels, you know that I spent this past weekend in Rossburg, Ohio, at Eldora for the 37th and 38th annual runnings. Uh, I'm not sure if they're annual runnings. I'm all mixed up about this whole annual thing, okay? The 37th and 38th running of the King's Royal. What a fantastic weekend. So great catching up with so many people up there, all of our driver friends and uh, everybody in the pit area, but then all of you great sprint car fans and friends as well. It was cool hanging out and uh, hung out in some various spots there at the racetrack. It was fun catching up with folks. Went down to the whistle stop and ran into some sprint car friends there. And so really, really neat. So a wonderful time. And what incredible racing and what an incredible day of racing uh, Saturday was. I know those at the racetrack, everyone loved it, loved every minute of it. Uh, great, great chance to, to see the best in the business. And I know even uh, those that followed along on Dirt Vision were talking about what a great day of racing it was. So uh, we're very fortunate in the sprint car world to have Wonderful organizations and tracks and people and racers that put on these shows, and what a show it was, for sure. So we're going to talk a lot about that. We're going to talk about some other things as well. So glad you joined us here on Wing Nation. Let's look at our um, Hefter Racing products, our HRP hot topics, before we get into the bulk of the program. And yeah, two kings. Kyle Larson is King Kyle the 37th. And Tyler Courtney is King Tyler the 38th. Tyler's going to join us here in just a little bit. But um, first and foremost, I think it is appropriate that if Kyle Larson is going to win a big race, a crown jewel, the King's Royal, he should win what should have been the 2020 edition. Remember last year when he won everything? Been a bit of a struggle this year for him. Hasn't won nearly as regularly in his sprint car. Uh, but when we laid the 37th running, which would have been the 2020 edition out, Kyle Larson became Kyle Larson. And what a show he put on Saturday night. What a thriller that one was. Some great, great racing throughout. And then what can we say about Tyler Courtney? I mean, three or four years ago, this is a USAC top driver with a dream of going wing sprint car racing. He pursues that dream with that race team, Clawson Marshall Racing. They have some success along the way, leading the all-star points. And here he is in his first shot at the King's Royal, knocks down the big one. First start in the King's Royal. Ironically, first start in the King's Royal for both Kyle Larson, and for uh, Tyler Courtney. So their first one, uh, one, one Kings Royal in, and uh, they both scored victories, won the crown, got the big prize and everything. So really, really neat. Need, need to talk about some solid efforts, though, when we look at racing up there. I know winning is so important, and I know that these guys really, uh, some of these guys are not, not all that happy with the results. But how about Sheldon, second and fifth, amazing run, Sheldon Hodgenshield, man, he gets around that joint. He won a World of Outlaw race earlier this year up at uh, up at Eldora, and uh, it's just a matter of time before Sheldon cashes in on on the big one on the Kings Royal or next year the historical big one that returns. Uh, that was another announcement over the weekend. Of course, Tyler Courtney first and fourth. He was good in the uh, in the second race as well, and so two top five finishes there. Uh, Carson Macedo, Brad Sweet, and Danny Dietrich, all top tens all day long. Uh, again, I think if you're, um, I think if you're Brad, uh, you're probably leaving there not necessarily as happy as you'd like to be. Uh, Carson won, Carson had a weird, weird week. He won the little $10,000 to win races on Wednesday night and Sunday, and two top 10 finishes. And then I think if you're Danny Dietrich, you are absolutely ecstatic headed back to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I'm sure he's already back in Gettysburg with a second place run and a 10th place finish. So kudos, tip of the cap to all of those drivers for some great racing. And as we mentioned, Wednesday and Sunday, uh, the night before the Royal and the Joker's Wild, 
And when the little money was on the line, Carson Macio picked up the win, getting $10,000 for each of those. Great, great weekend. Great, great time at Eldora Speedway. Again, just cannot stress, uh, as somebody who watches a lot of Dirt Vision and a lot of Flow Racing and all of the other channels with Racing Boys and all of the other channels, I love it, but I just cannot stress enough how good it is to get to the racetrack. And uh, so get out and support your sprint car drivers at a racetrack this weekend. Looking at some other racing action, King of the West, the Howard Cading Classic. We had Bud Cading on uh, our uh, show a couple of weeks ago uh, on our MAV TV show, our television program on MAV and Rev. And uh, this was the Howard Cading Classic. And Sean Becker, the Shark, picked up the win. Um, just really, really neat with the Shark getting the win. We're going to talk to Sean Becker as well today on the program. Can't wait to do that. One of the, uh, one of the mainstays out on the western part of the country. Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour, U.S. 36 Raceway in Osborne, Missouri. It was Matt Covington picking up the win. Justin Henderson. Wow, Justin Henderson is rolling. I think that was a headline last week that we talked about and that he had started to win races between Houston's and Knoxville on a regular basis. This weekend, both wins. Knoxville on Saturday night, Houston's on Sunday night. Justin Henderson, one of those guys that as we get closer and closer to that second week of August, looks like he is dialing up that Sandvik car for a good run at the Nationals and not a better guy on the planet than Justin Henderson. Other winners this weekend, no suspense. Robert River City's Austin Pierce got the win. Williams Grove had a World of Outlaw tune-up. They have the Summer Nationals coming up this weekend. Freddie Raymer. Man, did he run stout. I actually had a chance, got back to the hotel with the rain out on Friday night dialed up some dirt vision and watched Freddie Raymer and looking stout is young Freddie up there at Williams Grove and Tri-City on Sunday night. It was A.J. Flick picking up the win. So complete chaos, as he's known on Twitter. A.J. Flick picked up the win. A great weekend of sprint car racing. Again, headlined by the Kings Royal and uh, Tyler Courtney is going to join us here on the program, and Sean Becker. So, uh, Hepner Racing Products, HRP, they know and they love karting. From sprint to road racing to winged outlaw karts, HRP Streeter Superstands are the number one selling brand for karting. Automatic electric lift, rolling stands, stackers to carry multiple carts just like sprint cars. HRP has tire racks, engine racks, bead breakers, and a whole line of kart racing accessories. You can find out more at www.hrpracing.com. I just saw a post, and we put it on our Facebook group. HRP is looking for employees to join their wing-making division. So you can find HRP Racing on Facebook or look through our Facebook group. They're looking for some folks up at their place in Wisconsin to make wings. Like to get involved with sprint cars? How about that? HRP Racing. HRPRacing.com. We talked about the great racing up at Eldora. This was the 37th running of the Kings Royal, which was the second one of the weekend. Still haven't figured that out. What a race this one was at the front of the field, though, for the World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars. We had James McFadden. We had Tyler Courtney and Kyle Larson all battling it out. Here is our good friends Johnny Gibson and Tony Bakoven with the call on Dirt Vision. And now for the Dry Dean Deaf Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on track moves. Three wide for the lead out of turn number four as Kyle Larson is right there. McFadden leads lap number 19. Now Kyle Larson takes the lead from McFadden in turn two. James McFadden back to the inside, side by side for the lead. Kyle Larson shuts the door on him in turn number three. That Deaf Defying Move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Deaf. The official death of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. For decades, Drydean Lubricants has been made in America and made to last, paving the way on our highways, in our fields, and on the production line. Today, Drydean offers a complete line of engine oils, greases, hydraulic and transmission fluids, and diesel exhaust fluid. If you want greater performance and protection for your critical engines and equipment, go to Drydean.com. Drydean, American owned and operated and a proud supporter of racing and race fans everywhere. Flow Racing is the home of grassroots racing with over 1,300 races streaming live in 2021. 
Watch the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl, World 100, Dirt Late Model Dreams, Sweet 16, and much, much more. Subscribe today by going to flowracing.com slash MRN. From sprint cars on dirt to SK Modifieds on pavement, arena cross, drag racing, and everything in between, it's here, live, and on demand. Subscribe today by going to flowracing.com slash MRN. That's F-L-O racing.com forward slash MRN. Presented by Hercules Tires continues on. So glad you have joined us and spending some time with us here this week as we break down what was double Kings Royals this past weekend and picking up the win on the Saturday afternoon portion. It is the 38th running of the Kings Royal is, let's see, King Tyler the 38th. Tyler Courtney Sunshine joins us on the Dry Dean Hotline. Hello, Tyler. Welcome into Wing Nation. Hey, how are you guys? We're doing really, really well. Um, how are you? Has this has this all sunk in yet as to what you accomplished this past weekend, Tyler? Uh, you know, it's, it's it's starting to get there. Um, it's still, you know, kind of really unbelievable. But, um, you know, you know, getting to you know finally catch up on you know all the tweets and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. You know, kind of just makes it makes it that little you know that more that more real and just. Uh, pretty incredible to you know being our our first first try at the king's world and you know come out champions especially you know that this is really our first year going going wings for car racing is uh yeah just uh incredible really but it's an awesome feeling and uh they can't take it away from us no not at all nor should they that's for sure is there a is there a tweet or a text or a message or a moment even after the race that kind of stands out to you as 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 as, as just cool whether professionally or personally yeah, I think so. Like, so gravel pulled on scales for me, and obviously everyone knows that he was light. So I'm not even thinking about that at the time. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm excited, and then all of a sudden he's light, and so I immediately go into you know panic mode, and the whole place gets quiet. And as soon as the uh, I roll up on the scales, and you know, as soon as that they went green, the whole place went nuts again, and then it became became real all over again and it was just uh you know kind of that moment where you you just realize that you know what you did and you know it was cool to you know feel that emotion from the you know the fans and everyone that was there so i think that was you know the moment that you're like all right i i just did something you know pretty amazing yeah you did that was that was kind of wild you're right when when gravel came up light it's like wait a minute could someone else be light it just kind of yeah. brings yeah it just brings that reality into it and 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 it is amazing tyler your journey and we actually had tim clausen on our podcast last week your journey with tim with richard marshall and with your guys who are actually not wing sprint car guys what was that like just to celebrate with this group this tight-knit group that, uh, that 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 you guys have become over the last couple of years of this journey. You know, I I, I think it was. Um, you know, we were kind of all in the same boat. We just didn't really believe that we actually did it. Um, you know, I think it's kind of you know we've each kind of taken our own you know journey to get to this point, and um, not not a lot of it involved you no know, wing sprinter racing. But um, you know what we we you know, we we we've done it as as a team and. Um, you know, learned learned as we go, and you know, we by golly, we, we won the Kings Royal. So, um, but yeah, it's been cool to celebrate with them. Um, you know, Jake, my crew chief, he's been around racing for a long time and done a lot of things. And then I have Luke. He he, you know, barely knew what a sprint car was a year and a half ago, and um, you know, has been in school for you know, aviation stuff. And then Balin's 15 years old, um, so. You know, to, to kind of bring a group like that and uh, you know, go go win one of the biggest races of the year is pretty dang special. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And I got a chance to hang out with some of your guys there with uh, with Richard and Tim, and uh, just a just a neat neat group of people. It really truly is, and really amazing. When you look at this, Tyler, because I, I remember it was probably three years ago. We were at PRI and we did some interviews in the racing electronics booth and you were the USAC champion. And you at that time said, I, I'd, I'd like to maybe go wing sprint car racing, which of course that piqued up my interest. Um, <laughs> it's, it's like, 
is this warp speed to get here or has it been a but has it's it's not been warp it, it's it's been quick i know i understand that with a year and a half or two years but has it seemed like it's just been warp speed or has it seemed like it's been a long journey as you've as you've continued to climb this ladder um the, um you know like the the wing racing success kind of feels like warp speed but to get the journey to get to you know just you know being a sprint car driver or a you know driving for a living uh, definitely seems like it's taken a while and you know but the and the, the journey I took to to get to this point definitely wasn't the easiest one but it's one that I would never trade for the world that um, you know makes a moment like Saturday that much more um, I, don't know, I guess important or special um, so even though it seems like it took forever it really wasn't that long ago that I was uh, you know I was trying to you know get this journey going and um, just you know, kind of really cool to, you know, reap some benefits of it now. And it's um, something that I'm going to keep enjoying until uh, till they, till people stop hiring me to drive the race cars. What did I hear that you actually spent a stint sleeping on Blake Anderson's couch? Yeah, well, so it, they had a little guest room there. I lived with, uh, you know, Kirk Spurgeon, who's the, the race director at USAC, and, and uh, Blake Anderson. Uh, they have a little condo over in Avon, and yeah, I spent, I don't know, probably almost a year in their little guest room, and I, I, I keep waiting for uh, the text that asking for back rent on, on, on that. But no, I just uh, I did what I had to do to, you know, to, to make racing possible, and that uh, was just part of, part of the journey. There are various ways to go sprint car racing, and some people have some connections that allow them to go sprint car racing. Some folks have big checkbooks that allow them to go sprint car racing. Yours has been grit and determination and hard work and never giving up. I have got to imagine that 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 that, that just has to enhance your satisfaction of this. Oh, absolutely, and uh, you know, I just just knowing that you know everything I did, uh, you know, I gave up a lot of things. Uh, didn't get to do a lot of things, you know, you know, as a teenager and things like that. But you know, it was all it was all my my decision, and you know, it just you know makes giving up a lot of things and you spending money I didn't even have to, to make sure I could go to the, the racetrack with my own sprint car and and uh, things like that. It just kind of makes it, you know, it, it's all worth it now, you know what I mean? And, and it, not that it hasn't been worth it before this, but, you know, getting to, to win on Saturday at a, an event like that, um, yeah, it uh, just makes it real. The race itself, Tyler, um, an afternoon show. You're out there. You're running around behind Brad Sweet. Lap 19, uh, Lockie McHugh sends a tire skyward. I think everybody in the place is like, here we go. It's going to be one of those days. Brad Sweet gets a flat tire. At that point, how are you approaching the second half of the race as as the new leader, uh, not sure exactly what's going on with, 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 with tire wear? Yes. Just don't blow a tire. That's all. And like, and you don't know if there's like if you know if Brad ran over something or anything like that. So you're just you know you're kind of looking at the track to make sure there's nothing out there. But obviously we knew it was taking rubber. So um, yeah, my my plan for you know the next 20 laps or so is just to not miss the rubber and you know save as much tire as I can to make it to the end and um, you know hopefully not screw up. And, and uh, it all worked out. You know, David obviously got really close there at the end, but um, still never passed me, and we, we let the lap be counted. What's that like when there's a strip of rubber and you're working in it? You you know that somebody is coming. This might have been before David got alongside you and showed you a little bit there in turn three, I think it was, or wherever it was, and you're flogging lap traffic because it went 21 laps from lap 19 to lap 40. What's your level of patience like and your level of pacing like? What is that? Take us behind the wheel. What's what's that like? Just a lot of patience. Um, when you're running in the rubber like that, you got to be super straight. You know, obviously, you still got to run fast, or those guys are going to drive around you somehow. So, but you're trying not to run too hard to you know, <laughs> use up your whole tire because you know, 21 laps and a rubber down racetrack is a long time on a half mile because you're, you're, you're still going pretty fast. You know, uses up a lot of tread, but um, I just I, I felt like I, I knew what pace I needed to run. Just you know, I've ran a lot of silver car races where we run on the rubber and things like that. And um, you know, I I had looked at Brad's tire before I went down and knew kind of what his 
tread looked like, and I knew, you know, we'd been kind of running the same pace, and my tire probably looked pretty close to that. Um, and then, you know, so I, and then I just started waiting for it to, you know, the tire to start shaking. When you're when the, those tires get so low, um, the tread get low, and they start to have a little tire shake. And you know, honestly, I never really got that, so I knew I could still start pushing a little harder. So when David David showed me the nose, you know, in three and four there, I knew the last couple laps I, I needed to pick it up a little bit or I was going to lose that thing. So um, the last couple laps, I picked up the pace a little bit. Here we are. I'll say. I'll say you really did. It was phenomenal. It really, truly was as you rolled to the win. We had Tim Clawson on our podcast last week, and I believe he shared a story. It was your first ride for them. Uh, was it Kokomo? Where yep. you got an opportunity to go out there and you proceeded to just dump the race car right on the first yep. lap. Um, and he shared that story with us because you, the, the, the story was is that you had invited everybody that you know to come out and watch you race, and here you are wrecking the car, and you, you went home that night with your, your, your tail between your legs, but when they opened the shop the next morning, you were the first person there. Um, what do you, what, how, how does that factor into your whole career here and, and, and getting back on the horse after what had to be just a brutal start to your, to your open-wheel racing career? Yeah, so for me, it was just, well, I'm probably not going to make it as a race car driver now. I might as well just try and keep my job here as a, as a guy working on them. So, um, yeah, it was just uh, obviously not the way you want to start your racing career, but, um, you know, one that, you know, definitely, uh, you know, makes you – it was an experience that I'm glad I had, um, you know, to, to know that it's, I, that's when I found out that racing is not easy. You know what I mean? So. Like, you know, to have that experience and, you know, make me want to, you know, work even harder to get back and prove that I can do it. I'm not just a, a one lap hero type of guy. And, um, yeah, so I, like that experience was, was good for me on a, on a lot of fronts. And, you know, and you know, at the end of the day, um, I've, I've still flipped a lot at Kokomo, but I've also won a lot, a lot of races at Kokomo now. So <laughs> it's a place where I, you know, I've, you know, I started my journey as a as a race car driver, and it's a place that you know kind of helped make make my name at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I hadn't thought about that with Kokomo specifically because that's that's where it all began. But um, neat stuff. Yeah. As you um as you roll forward now, it's kind of like back to the day job. We we have these big marquee World of Outlaw races. Not even a point race for you with the All Stars. Um, getting back to it now, you've you've cleared Ohio Speed Week. Okay, you've cleared the Kings Royal with success. Um, the focus getting back to the All Stars this weekend. I think you have three shows down in Missouri and Kansas. Um, would it be tough to focus, or are you just you guys ready to get back after and just continue with the momentum you have? Yeah, we're we're just ready to you know carry this momentum and to you know uh, you know fun little little trip we got they have planned for us out there, and um, you know you, this weekend. Friday, Saturday pays eight thousand and ten thousand. So, um, you know, we're we're still <clears throat> we're hungry, and uh, you know, we're we're riding momentum, and um, our, we still have another goal to win the championship. So we got to do what we have to do to, you know, go go take care of that. So, yeah, it's back to the day job, but you know, day job for us is you know going to race sprint cars. So that's pretty damn pretty damn awesome. Pretty good day job for sure. Finally, as we roll forward, uh, everyone's eyes with the Kings Royal being wrapped up now. The next big one is Knoxville. The good news is with the All-Stars, you get a chance to test the waters there. Has your – winning the Kings Royal has your – I know you race car drivers all go to these races with the goal, the desire, the dream, the passion to win these races. But now when we look at Knoxville, the next big one has the pers- – perspective or expectations changed a little bit as you look at that next big one um yeah i mean i think the i think perspective is you know our we we, we know we can do it now uh right yeah. but you know, Knoxville is a completely different racetrack than than Eldora um and uh we've been okay in Knoxville but we haven't been the best but yeah like you said with the all star get we get to go there you know kind of a couple weeks before to Test the waters a little bit, you know. Hopefully, you know, get a get a good baseline to you know come back to nationals and have our have our best day game going into that. And but yeah, I think you know, obviously your, your first goal when you show up to Knoxville is just to you know just making the show. And when I think once you make the show, it's 50 laps. You got a uh, got a race for 150 or you know if you lead every lap, 200 thousand dollars. So 
Um, at the end of the day, it's the national nationals, and it's not easy, but um, you know, I think you know if we just keep carrying the momentum and keep doing the things that we've been doing this whole summer, we, I think we, it's not crazy to think that we don't have a chance at, at you know, contending for uh, a nationals crown. It sounds so easy, but it's so difficult, and you guys yeah. are really, yeah, you guys are just working so hard on it, and it's, and, and, and in honesty, just as a sprint car and race fan, it's fun to watch. Tyler, congratulations on that big win, and as always, we appreciate your time joining us here on Wing Nation. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. There we go. Sunshine, Tyler Courtney driving for the Clawson Marshall team, picking up the win at the Kings Royal. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Over 200 events from coast to coast, and they're celebrating 30 years of scattering soil. The American Sprint Car Series, the world's largest sprint car sanctioning body, and bringing more thrills with wing and even more non wing action in 2021. 11 regional tours, the national tour. No matter where you are, we're coming to a track near you. Can't be there? Get double the streaming fun with Racing Boys and FlowRacing.com, bringing all the adrenaline to your favorite streaming device. See the full lineup of this now at ASCSRacing.com. Circle B Diecast is the new diecast outlet from Plan B Sales. What started as Lionel and Chase Authentics Apparel Distributor has grown into the largest distributor of diecast and now includes Auto World Greenlight Collectibles, Brand Art, Sam Bass Artwork, and University of Racing Lines. They have a huge inventory. The folks at Circle B Diecast love racing and support drivers like Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Christopher Bell, and many others with sponsorships and partnerships. And on orders over $20, use promo code MRN for free shipping. Check them out, CircleBDieCast.com. Nation presented by Hercules Tires. Right on our strength, we continue on. We continue with the big winners of the weekend. Let's go back to the Dry Dean Hotline because it was the Howard Cating Classic out at uh, Ocean Speedway in Watsonville. The Shark, Sean Becker, picked up the win, and he joins us on the hotline. Hello, Sean. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me. Well, it is cool to have you on. Okay, so I just I want to go right to the end before we get into the race itself, okay? So you win this race. Sean, you've been racing a long time. You've been you won a lot of races. You win this race. You jump out of the car, you sprint across the racetrack, and you climb the fence. The emotion, the excitement, was it just, why, what, what created that moment for you? Um, well, it's kind of been a long trying year, really. Um, um, it, I, this is kind of the first year with this uh, new team, and um, we've, had a lot of trials and tribulations along the way and we never gave up and just the faith and dedication that my car owners debbie and and dave vertulo have put in me um there's there was never any finger pointing or any any blame going on like we everybody just kind of put their head down and went to work and we have continued to kind of slowly produce speed and with this race car and this race team and to finally like feel like we've been in the hunt the last couple of weeks and then to finally get it done like it was just uh like a big exhale big sigh of relief so like i was so proud to finally get a win for this great team um they've been they deserved it they put in the hard work and um to yeah finally do that um this old man put his butt up the fence, so <laughs> we got her done. It was awesome. It was fantastic. Um, the Vertulos, uh, am, I, am I correct that they've been team owners for some time, but their last NARC King of the West uh, win was in 2012. So it sounds like they're just absolutely hardcore, wonderful sprint car people. Oh, absolutely. And um, this is the great family that um, gave Kyle Larson his first sprint car break so um yeah i i've been battling that car for a long time when kyle was in it 
yeah, in the late like 2010 um, year or that range. And yeah, so Kyle Larson um, gave that team a lot of wins, a, um, a lot of big moments. And yeah, he had several other uh, drivers kind of throughout the years, but then um, they actually took a, I want to say like a seven year break between uh, and just kind of got out of racing. And last year was the kind of the first year that they came back like and then COVID hit so it was kind of like a weird odd year for everybody but it, it's been so great to have them back in this sport um man there's just an abundance of race car drivers out here like in the country really but not a lot of car owners to go around so for us to get another great car car owner and a uh, car out there on the track is it's huge for the sport and it's huge for the state so um yeah we we def desperately needed more people like them and yeah i'm i'm proud to drive for them you talk about the car owners being back and sean it was a couple of months ago when they started to open the grandstands you'd want to dash or you'd want something and you 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 really uh, uh for for lack of a better term you just preached uh, about how good it was to have the fans back I think I think as a sport collectively, and this is from the NASCAR rank to to, to to everything else, we took it for granted. Climbing that fence and being in front of fans at Ocean Speedway, man, I tell you what, that that had to be an adrenaline rush with the, with the fans back at the racetrack as well. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, you don't really realize what you have until it's gone, and we basically spent an entire year racing without fans, and um, luckily we kind of had like slow racing and um, all the televised and streaming services so people could actually watch it, but they would have us stop on the front straightaway to do an interview in front of nobody, but we're doing it for the cameras, but it was just an eerie feeling. And then, yeah, finally this year we won a dash and they told me to go on the front straightaway to do an interview and to look up, just hearing the applause, seeing the excitement, like it just brings so much to the or it's the energy that they bring that we have desperately needed and we desperately miss. Speaking of energy, speaking of post-race, speaking of the sport, what's it like to share victory lane with Howard Kading? It's an honor. Um, all, all the Katings, um, they are legends of the sport, legends of the state, and um, to win a marquee event like that, was just absolutely huge um it's so funny because like i'm now one of the old guys racing in in the class racing with guys half my age and and when he presented the trophy to me so congratulations kiddo i'm all well yeah i guess i guess i could be a kiddo but i don't feel like it with all these kids that i'm racing against but oh it was just such an honor and it's so great because man like it seems like some of these big events that we do have tend to be memorial races um so we're honoring legends who have fallen in the past and to have the person um kind of still be around and get to enjoy the race with you and then like congratulate you on the front stretch oh man that's huge like that's a memory that i'm gonna keep with me for the rest of my life Three years ago, I went out and did the Kading Classic and got to spend some time with Howard and the rest of the family, and I agree. He is just an absolute legend, uh, Just even even just the way he carries himself and everything. I just He's just one of those iconic people in the sport and really, really neat. Sean, when we look at the race, okay, I think the good news for you is you were in front of the chaos. I looked, I, was, I watched the replay, and at one time, I thought I was part of a Royal Rumble WWE match because drivers were screaming, and I don't even know that they were, knew who they were screaming at. There was cars everywhere. Um, <laughs> how was the race from your perspective? Because it seems like you were in front of most of the chaos. Yeah, um, you're exactly right. I, I think I coined the phrase on the front stretch. I, I apologize to the fans. I said it was a bit of a gong show out there. But, man, <laughs> we – uh the night before was the 360 show and we started i think ninth or so maybe seventh and got collected in a big pile up so um 
this Saturday night, we were able to start fourth. I was able to get up to second on the first corner. And luckily, everything just kind of happened behind me. So it was huge. Um, track position um, was very key to getting this win done and kind of missing all that. But, man, like it, especially on restarts, like that turn one, like, I mean, we're California bull rings, but um, so we're, we typically race on a narrow track. But turn one, getting into the corner, like outside is quite a bit of ways around there so you can fit a lot of people underneath and there was sliders going to happen and tips and a lot of times they just don't work and yeah and when when you get a couple guys starting to pile up like there's not enough room to kind of miss it so um yeah luck yeah basically i got to um witness it from the highlight video and luckily it was behind me when i was actually on the track nice situation that is for sure. That was, it was crazy. I, I couldn't believe, I could not believe uh, that one crash in turn two. Everyone's jumping out and screaming. I saw Jim Allen in the middle of it. He looked like the referee. I don't know that anyone came to blow. I don't even know that they were knew who they were mad at. It just mad it had happened. But um, but it's crazy. You talk about this. You've, you've referenced before that you're one of the veteran drivers and you referenced before racing with kids. Um, I'll be curious, Sean, has, has, has the racing changed? Is there a different way these kids race? Or uh, did you kids race like the same way when, when, when you guys were coming up through and now uh, maybe you see it just from the, from the age perspective? No, yeah, I definitely feel like um, the style of, ra of racing has evolved through the years for sure. Um, um, I was actually having this conversation with my good buddy Andy Forsberg, and we were kind of talking about, you got, you remember when – Everybody was running the high line, and you caught somebody. You'd basically try to make it work and pass them on the bottom line. Well, it it's not like that anymore. Like if you're you hit nowadays, if you catch somebody, um, they're basically in your way, and you're gonna slide in front of them to to do whatever you can to get to to make it work. So um, so maybe the mentality has changed a little bit. Um, youthful exuberance. I, I don't I don't know what it is, but it definitely has evolved and um yeah i've been racing for nearly 20 years now and you just kind of have to evolve with the times and um luckily i i can luckily this old man can still get her done yeah i'll say that i, I was watching i was at eldora and watching the heat races and, I, and i'm telling you that it, it has become a take sport it is, you, you know, there, there used to be a lot of racing, but it just seems like to me it's become a take sport. Did you, did, did you kind of have to talk yourself into maybe a little bit more of that attitude as, as, as you noticed there was, there, there, there was more receiving of, 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 of tight slide jobs and, and, and that sort of thing over the, over the last some years? Absolutely, Steve. Um, yeah. yeah, you have to, it is a cutthroat sport for sure. And um, I've always kind of, try to be a very respectful driver both on and off the track and um kind of always like live by the rule of race others how you would want to be raised um but sometimes um there are people being a more aggressive to you than you think you would be to them and you have to adjust accordingly really and um i unfortunately i haven't been winning as much as i have in the past so maybe i haven't fully embraced um that style but i mean you you look at tony shots and fred sweet and gravel like they're they, they race on it they'll race you side by side every single lap and like they're still winning races so like that style i, I feel like still can be done so um it's just yeah, you just kind of focus on yourself, focus on your car, get yourself faster, get yourself comfortable, and and you'll still be able to get some wins. Finally, I was snooping around on Facebook uh, and uh, looking at your website, and I, I literally uh, stopped and spent 17 minutes watching one, nine minutes watching the next one. One of our favorite guests here on Wing Nation has, has always been Andy Forsberg. Uh, you and him do sit down recap videos occasionally. How did this begin between you and Andy? <laughs> well, so D Andy actually does it after every race, which is great. Like I'm not on social media, but 
like we'll be laying in bed um, after the races and Lisa, my wife, will just start busting up laughing and she has to show me the video that Andy posted of recapping his night. So he kind of has, has always done that. And we became good friends um, the last several years. And we actually started kind of camping on a couple of the double header nights and everything. And the first night we started camping where we raced, like I won that night. So I think he kind of felt like he needed to add me into his recap. But every, every time we've camped since then, he's kind of said, well, before we go to bed, we got to, got to get this done. So, so yeah, we have a little shark tail silt segment at the end of each night. And it's been really it's it's been fun. Like he's he's really the entertainment. He's the funny one. I'm just kind of along for the ride. But definitely have gotten a lot of feedback from a lot of people uh, telling me how much they enjoy it. So so it's a lot of fun. For a guy not on social media, you're a social media darling. Uh, hang with Forsberg. That'll get you in a lot of places. Maybe some trouble too along <laughs> Absolutely. the way. Absolutely. Yeah, unreal. <laughs> well, Sean, um, I tell you what, I was so happy to see you pick up that win, the Caden Classic, and your reaction to it. Uh, we wish you continued success as you roll along with your 360 racing and with your King of the West and all the 410 racing, actually, as California continues to grow. And we appreciate you joining us here on Wing Nation. Yeah, thank you for having me, Steve. I appreciate it. There we go. The Shark. Sean Becker here on the Hercules Tire Hotline on Wing Nation. Sunoco is a proud partner of Wing Nation. Not all fuels are created equal, so fill up with Sunoco Ultratech. Sunoco Ultratech is a top-tier detergent gasoline that is proven to make your engine run cleaner, longer, and more efficiently. Using the same detergent package as what is blended into some of Sunoco's high-performance race fuels, you can trust Ultratech for your everyday race. Whether you're headed to the track or just hitting the road, fill up with Sunoco Ultratech and fuel your best. Sage Fruit is a premium grower, packer, and shipper of Washington tree fruit. Apples, pears, and cherries, and it's always an exceptional eating experience, and they're grown in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. High-quality fruit, exceptional flavor, healthy snacking, and they're a longtime supporter of Sprint Cars, Sprint Car Racing, and Wing Nation. Make sure when you go to your local grocery store, ask for Sage Fruit. Just like racing components, Aggressive Hydraulics purpose builds hydraulic cylinders to perform for customer-specific applications. They design and manufacture mobile-style, single-stage cylinders, as well as multi-stage telescopic cylinders. It's a no-one-size-fits-all approach with Aggressive Hydraulics. Hydraulic solutions for virtually every industry that uses hydraulic cylinders. They proudly design and manufacture all cylinders in the United States. Check out the video of their story at AggressiveHydraulics.com. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum, located in turn number two at one Sprint Car Place in Knoxville, Iowa. We celebrate birthdays with their birthday calendar. Monday, John Sawyer birthday. Later this week, Shane Carson, one of the great ambassadors of the sport. His birthday is tomorrow. Louis Myers uh, as well. Louis Myers, Bill Hill later on. And today is the birthday of 2004 inductee Chuck Gurney, the Rim Rider, born out in California, if I'm not mistaken, but grew up in Albuquerque, age 20. I always love when we talk about the history of sprint car racing. Age 20, drove his first sprint car race, a NARC race. Boy, how times have changed. By age 20, you're a grizzled veteran in sprint car racing nowadays. Was the 1983 NARC champion, 1985 USAC Super Modified champion, the 89 Silver Crown champion in USAC racing, particularly midgets and silver crown races, if there was a big race, Chuck Gurney won it. He was a five-time Motorsports Press Association Open Wheel Driver of the Year and, yes, inducted into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in 2004. And we'd like to remind you the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum has that win a Z51 Corvette sweepstakes. You can go to winaz51.com or go on the Sprint Car Hall of Fame uh, website. The drawing is August 14th. 
right before the A main for the Knoxville Nationals. That's www.winaz51corvette.com or sprintcarhof.com. Make sure you check that out. And when you get to Knoxville, coming up in just a few weeks, if you get to Knoxville, make sure you go in the museum and check out this um, salute to champion Greg Hodnett. It is spectacular in a word. We have got some great racing action coming up tonight. The World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars, $25,000 on the line. Their annual trip into, uh, into Lernerville in the month of July, the Don Martin Memorial Silver Cup. And if that's not enough for you, if you're up in Pennsylvania and want to go attend a race, uh, or Jeremy Elliott, uh, Sprint Car Unlimited has the pay-per-view on this one. Sealands Grove Speedway, 410 Sprint Cars and Super Late Models, the 75th anniversary celebration. So not one, but two great races here on a Tuesday night. I mentioned uh, this a couple of times over the last few weeks, wrapping up Eldora and headed to Speed Week for ASCS. Yes, I can't wait to get to Memphis. I'm going to spend a day in Memphis tomorrow and then uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the first three nights of Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour Sprint Speed Week. And on our podcast this week, we're going to talk to Blake Hahn. He is the reigning champ uh, or the reigning point leader right now of the ASCS National Tour. Wing Nation apparel and gear is available at www.wingnation.com or Missouri and Kansas this week, where the All-Stars are. Coming up this weekend, it is Wing Nation, our television program, presented by Sage Fruit, and Terry McCarl is our guest on that program. You can catch that Wednesday night in Canada on Rev TV, Saturday nights on Mav TV. Hey, we appreciate King Tyler the 38th and Sean Becker for joining us here on Wing Nation. More important than all of that, thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires right on ours.